If you're interested in flight simulation, then the chances are you'll be interested in other types of simulation as well, um, which can vary from train simulations, which I'm going to do now right the way through to simulations besieging um, 14th century medieval castles, which you can get in uh, things like Total War. But um, I'm just going to, uh, if you've never um, played uh, train simulator, I'm just going to give you a quick um, run through of what you can expect and what you can get out of it. Um, it's got a, um, a new interface and I'm going to use a, a quick drive there. I'm not great for doing tutorials or anything like that um, and um, I'm not great for playing scenarios either because the thing about this game is it's got a lot of scenarios in it and people who play it they do tend to play the scenarios but I just tend to um, drive the train. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go on, um, now th this is not included in the default software so I apologize for that because um, normally I try and keep things as cheap as I can so um, I could have showed you one of the default trains and one of the default routes but um, this is the um, ice train which I've been on and that's one of the advantages isn't it obviously of driving simulation is it's something you've done yourself it's always more interesting to drive a train that you yourself travel on uh, and I think they know that because they tend to model UK routes and German routes and if they get a big market in Taiwan, they'd probably mod model a load of Taiwanese routes. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to take the ice train and it's a double set. And because that's fun, it's just two trains stuck together. Um, and we're going to go um, clone to Dusseldorf. So I'll do the whole route, but I won't show you the whole route because bits of it you can leave out. Um, the environment, we'll, we'll just keep it simple, shall we? We'll um, just say... Uh, Foggy, cloudy, snow, stormy rain, cloudy will do, and uh, it is winter. So let's confirm that, and then let's go. This uh, sort of quick drive scenario is considerably simplified from what it used to be. One of the things I don't like on this is all the advertising. Um, well, the problem is, um, if you um, are interested in game reviews, and I always now look on YouTube and watch a game being played even, um, if I'm going to buy anything, you'll find that the mainstream game reviewers like um, Total Biscuit don't review simulations. He's just not into that type of gameplay. So um, there is a very definite sort of mentality that likes the simulation rather than the game and it was very evident in the early days of flight simulator when all you know there was <laughs> it was very much sort of this is not a game it's a simulator this is not a game and then microsoft came out and called it microsoft games and that really infuriated everybody because it was even because it was installed in a folder marked games um and uh the so uh, one of total biscuits criticism of this when it's on sale is that the add-on stuff is expensive and and if you look at it i mean there's a lot of add-on stuff for this i think that's part of the problem because if you bought every single route and every single train you probably could spend hundreds of pounds or hundreds of dollars <sighs> you see this is i just i know this is a train set i don't understand why it doesn't load quicker than this it really should load quicker than this it seems to me that um, either they want you to watch their advertising, which is pretty inane, and it does repeat. And, and these things, you know, I don't know why you're... It doesn't, doesn't add to anything. Um, right, so I'm going to get cracking, because we'll, then we can talk as we go along. So we'll put it in forward, take off the gears. I'm going to press A a couple of times to... Um, get now... You can, you've got several views here. You've got the front view, which is the helicopter. You can actually go through the ground. It's another quirk. I wouldn't call it a bug. It is a quirk of the program. If you press the globe, it freezes you. And you, you can click and hold the mouse button and look around.
Now, the, the forwards and backwards keys will move you forwards and backwards, and you're getting a good idea of the um, length of this train here. What you can do is zoom into someone's head, and then you'll know you're roughly at head height. Let's just decelerate, because we don't want to go over too, too far over the speed limits. Now, one of the hopeless things about this is the other passengers. They really are hopeless. There's only about three of them. And uh, they walk like... Uh, they don't, you know, they're just... I don't know what they've done there. Um, I would rather have nobody on the station or... Yeah, and they... and they, um, Depending on where the end of the platform is set, they vanish out of nowhere. They, they, they just come out of nowhere and vanish. Oh, dear. You see? Here she is again. I mean, really, I'd like a facility to be able to turn the uh, passengers off. Either that or just have a bunch of them standing on the side of the platform looking sideways, which is what they, they do in real life. So, let's catch up with the train. Now, if you press the um, up arrow, you will go along. Um, you can zoom over the scenery. In, in fact, if you climb, you will go faster. So if you want to get ahead of the train, the best thing to do is to climb up and then come down again. This is um, Col Mesa Deutz, I think. Been here many a time waiting for the train to come through. Now once again, head height. And you can do things like watch your train come through. Um, what I'd remember is that if you go side to side, you'll stay at the same level, so your point of view will stay the same. I can probably just um, speed up a bit here. And that means if I want to go down the platform, the best way to do it, believe it or not, is to turn myself sideways on and go down <laughs> sideways, because then my, my eye line stays the same. Let's go down a bit more. If you only ever press the side key, then your line of sight will stay the same. The clocks are accurate. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty cool. Let's just decelerate again. I'm not. I'm not aiming to slavishly stick to the. Um, I want to put some lights on really as well. I'm not aiming to slavishly stick to the um, speed limits on this, but I will try and stick to them if I can. Is this Mesa I think it is, isn't it? Yes, there we are. Carl Mesa yeah. That's the um, exhibition centre over there. Let's just zoom up. That's the um, largest um, exhibition centre. Well, it's very... Actually, this, this scenery is pretty good. I forgot to tell you, if you press shift with one of the arrow keys, you will... It does speed you up. So that's without shift, and that's with shift. This um, railing down here, that's very accurately modelled, except it's full of padlocks. All the locals um, put padlocks all over this uh, fence, and so it's, it's a very particular um, thing to go and see. And other things, like this statue, you know, you, you will see these statues. And they've done a, quite a good job of um, modelling these. So, that's without shift, and then that's with shift. We better go and see where our train's got to, haven't we? Oh, there it is. <laughs> now the um. So that was the front. Uh, that wasn't the front helicopter view? And you can again by pressing the um arrow side to side arrows and up and down arrows you can zoom in and out and go side to side and if you want to go up and down then you right click and you can move the camera all the way around so that's uh, quite good and then you've got the same for the rear view so and that's again that's quite good if you want to uh, let's just slow down again don't want to derail the train The reason why we've gone over the speed limit is because it was 90 
and then all of a sudden, without any warning at all, it drops you into an 80 kilometre zone around about here. And then in a second it'll go back up to 90. So that's another thing. There's there are some inconsistencies in the. Um, I mean, I mean, with a, a sort of a train set of this complexity, I suppose you would expect there to be some kind of uh, inconsistencies, wouldn't you? Let's go back to the cab. Now, same thing applies. Uh, you can zoom in with the mouse wheel and zoom out to a degree and then if you press and hold down the right mouse button you can sort of look around. There's not much to see. I think rail cabs are necessarily pretty limited to um, forward vision, you know, you're not really expected to be looking at the scenery out of the side of a, of a cab. Now what other views have you got? Well you've got hanging out of the left hand window and hanging out of the right hand window which in this case aren't working because I'm pleased to say there are no windows to hang out and they haven't modelled that and there are some trains where you shouldn't really be hanging out the window but that view is still modelled which is a bit daft then you've got um, trackside camera now this you can't change at all basically it's focused on the middle of the train and it follows the middle of the train as it goes round. This is an overhead shot. There are other shots. This is not more like a sort of a bridge camera. But if we just leave it, it will as the train passes it'll it'll switch to another view. And it's very much um how can I put it? So it's luck, you know, it's just luck. It's just it's like a flyby camera in flight simulator. Except that you you get absolutely no chance to control it. So we're slightly lower down now. We're still over the top of the train, so we haven't had much track by track side um, footage, have we yet? I'll just give it one more chance to do a track side shot. We're on the high speed part of the route now. No, and here we are now. We've got a bit now. We're standing, we're lying down in the middle of the road here, so. Mm. It's a shame they didn't put a little more thought in. I mean, these all, I suppose, these are all generated automatically. It would be nice for them to be done from the viewpoint of... Um, I'll show you. If I take it out into free world view, and we can go down to this uh, factory, and this is what the people in the factory would see out of the window, you see? Or if they were sitting out the back in a deck chair. Well, not that you would be sitting out the back in a deck chair in the snow. Now, if you want to um, see your train go past, you have to sort of get past it a bit. And there's a limit to how far you can get past it. You can't move more than a certain distance away. So, here we are on the bridge. Moving sideways, you see, to keep your eye line correct. And here we are on the bridge, and that's the sort of the view that you would get as the train came through. Now to get across to, <laughs> to run across the other side of the bridge you have to run sideways. <laughs> oh dear. Right, back in the cab. So now we're on the high speed uh, part of the track. Um, this is the um, Bayer Works where they discovered aspirin salicylic acid and in fact when you are on the actual train itself the Bayer Works is one of the um, uh, very very striking visual landmarks they have their logo up here and sort of an overhead I presume it's an illuminated sign and uh, you can see that there And that's, again, you see, that's nice. I mean, that's the sort of a landmark that you will see. Now, as far as the controls go, they, they're they pretty useless. I've got to be honest. 
You can, I'm, we need to cruise at 160. RFB. I'm going to see if I can set the cruise at 160. Weird. Oh, I've changed the position. You can obviously stand up and sit down. Now, you see how that's flying about all over the place? That's not really conducive to... I mean, it may be sort of realistic from a point of view, but I don't know from a... From an operation of the, these are very, very basic. I mean, they're very basic. I really would expect, um, you know, considering the money that's changing hands for this simulator, I would expect these cockpits to be much better. Now, this is not the um, latest version of the ice train. There is another one. Actually, with the cruise, you see that we're not cruising 160, and that's because you have to set the accelerator to um, be able to get you up to 160. Oh, there we are. I've just seen the um, 160 here. So you're setting the 160 here, and uh, with this knob here, is setting it over here. So it's not easy, you know. But then, what can you do with a PC simulation? You you need it to be able to simulate a plane's controls. You need it to simulate. Uh, a ballista. <laughs> you need to simulate a train. You need to simulate a tank. So I suppose, you know, fair enough. But this reminds me of the old two-dimensional cockpit um, on the old planes uh, when they couldn't they couldn't model a 3D cockpit, and um, so they had a two-dimensional one. And this, that's about the stage that they're at. Um, so you can see we're coming up to 100, 160 now. Now there, there's a wide variety of trains on here. If you like driving steam trains, um, they, they, um, they're very um, nice, you know. They're very, uh, they make all the right noises and nowadays they make all the right steam and smoke and everything and, um, and they're pretty good fun. Um, if you like driving fast, as I do, then there's, quite, there's a lot of really good representations of high speed routes including the HS1 route from um, Faversham to Victoria. Uh, now that's, you see, now that light's red, isn't it? Is it? I would have said so. But it's not doing anything. Because, again, the signals on here are not... They're not... The algorithm that sorts everything out is not brilliant you know it's just it's imperfect it's broken it doesn't work properly so you can ask for permission i think if you is it tab yeah request to pass signal at danger approved spad means signal passed at danger and you you pretty um oh god i was going just to say you normally get that and then all of a sudden don't get it um You have to remember when you're driving on, because the, the English trains drive on the left and the Continental trains drive on the right. The trackside camera actually is very good when you're <coughs> uh, doing hauling freight. Again, that's good. You know, if you're uh, if you've got a big freight train going up from the uh, some pass, a trackside camera watching it all go by is, is really is quite good, and that is quite good fun. I do like that. So what else can I show you? Well, um, there is a passenger view, and here you've got, I mean, they could have, <laughs> they could have a person in that chair, couldn't they? I mean, I think you wouldn't need to see them all that brilliantly, because, and I, but I think they probably could model a person from the back. Um, at the moment, we're, we're in a train that appears to be driven by the Mysterons. Um, but it's, you know, it's nice, and arguably this is the best seat on the train. This is, if I was sitting on this train, and I have put my head inside it, um, this is where I would sit. This is where I want to sit, anyway. 
probably not the right set, probably, probably sit right down the back in the cheap seats. Um, the frame rate is pretty good, and nowadays you can, uh, you see all this wiring up here, in the early versions of the train simulators you used to have to turn all that off. Um, the simulators are all about suspending your disbelief, and so you could, you could believe that you had wires overhead, even though you couldn't actually see them. But the early graphics cars literally couldn't draw all this stuff. So if you're on an external view, you're focused on the front carriage there, and if you want to move the back of carriage, you can click next rail vehicle, next rail vehicle, and obviously go back the other way. You can get a view which is basically the coupling view, which is obviously used when shunting. And um, you can get a what they call a yard camera, which is a shunting camera view as well. I think you can zoom in on, but basically just tells you where you are. You can see the you see the scenery um, appearing in front of us. There is a there is a funny thing with the scenery um, on the train simulator, which we may may not be able to demonstrate it to you. But what they've done is they've cottoned on to the fact that with the trees, um, they only need to present themselves to you at ninety degrees. In other words, they don't need to have a three dimensional tree. They can have a two-dimensional tree, providing it's flat onto you, it will look like a three-dimensional tree. Bear in mind, you're only looking on a two-dimensional mon monitor. So, what they do is the trees are ordered to present themselves to you flat, so they look at their best. And in fact, as you move past them, they will rotate to make sure they're always facing you so that you can't see that they're two-dimensional. <laughs> I don't know if we can see this. I don't even know if they fixed it. They may have fixed it now. But certainly... Um, well, perhaps they fixed it. But, but in the 2012 um, train simulator, all the trees used to follow you around. They used to look at you as you drove past. Now this, as I've said, is the free camera. If we go back to the... Uh, we go back to the cab view. I'll show you something funny you can do with the free camera. Obviously it just takes you back through the train. But if you're, um, if you're coming up to a station and you want to just watch yourself drive through the station, then you can use the free camera to sort of jump off the train onto the station. And your eye line might not be brilliantly correct, but it will be in the ballpark. So here's a station. So I'll go to the free camera and go left and you can watch your you can watch your train come through. Now, um, there are some other views. I'm going to slow down a bit because I've got a feeling we're um, not that far away from where we're supposed to be. Well, actually we're not that far away from where we're supposed to be. I will slow down. Here it's telling us where we're going, Dusseldorf Main Station, Platform 17. Here it's telling us it's uh, three kilometres away. This is the current time, 14.50. And it's telling us that we're expected to be there in uh, 14.52, which is about two minutes. So we don't want to go bombing into um, Dusseldorf Station, 160... Uh, kilometers an hour. This building here, this white building, is a good um, point to start slowing down. If you are trying to do a fast run, then just start slowing down around about that building. I 
you can see here we're in an 80. So we wouldn't get a job as a train driver, let's put it that way. We'll go back to that in a minute. No, continue back. This obviously is showing you the station, and as you slow down, this scales up. So there we are. So as you're going slowly, it uh, gets bigger. And also, is a good when your mission is to stop at a station. It's a very, very good indicator of where you need to stop. This is the signals here, so our objective really is going to be to stop the our locomotive just before the signals. And when you start driving this, you'll be hopeless. You'll go ploughing through stations, or you'll stop short and crawl and end up get, going way late. So um, don't worry. I mean, you can't be expected. You, you don't have a feel for the train. Do you know what I mean? So. I'll be helped. Another tip is that when you're coming into a station, look at the back of the train. And when the back of the train's in, then usually the front of the train's in as well. use is it because the back of the train's not in well it tells me I've reached the end of the quick drive scenario but um, the the um, back of the train didn't go in the station but then that's that's another example of just how sort of pretty unpolished this whole thing is it's quite it's good fun I would recommend it if you're interested in trains if you had a train set was your young boy or young girl I would certainly get it and the um, the builder itself is the subject of lots of videos on YouTube and and quite a bit of fun, but don't expect to build anything with it. Uh, really, if you're if you're interested in driving trains, don't try and build it. You can build a loop like you did on the carpet and a couple of points and a station. That's about as far as you'll get. Um, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, just give you a quick feel for the. Um, this as a simulator and uh, if you want to get the simulator you get quite a lot of stuff with it so and then if you decide that you want you know anything special then then obviously you pay a bit more <laughs>